Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. I'm Mr. TIG. You know, we're back at Cali College, and I've got Bob Moffat with me. We've been here before, and we've done some uh, other types of welding and tests, but because of you, we have special requests to do a 6G position. Now, a 6G pipe, we did one previously, and it was a few months ago, but it was in the 5G position, so I'm going to ask Bob, why on earth do you need to do a 6G if you've already done a 5G? So, Bob... Explain that to me. Little, little variations of a, of a test position. Uh, production welds, you know, typically we're going to find the 5G and the, the, the vertical welds and the horizontal welds in the field all the time. Occasionally we'll run into this uh, 6G position in production or in a, in a, in a weld that, that needs to be performed, fixed position. The, the reason that we like to use the 6G it's like a pre-qualifier. If, if I'm able to pass this test on a, in a 6G fixed position, it pre-qualifies me for all groove welds, all fillet welds, in all positions. They consider this to be all positions. It blends vertical, horizontal, it, by the nature of it sitting on a 45 degree angle. Okay. But actually, you know, when we're welding this, it's not much different than horizontal. It, it, you know, obviously, it's a blend between the two of them, but you, you kind of treat it like a, a horizontal weld. Uh, as we mentioned before in a previous segment, it, it's the attempt to get reinforcement on the inside of the pipe. I need to melt these edges, and I need to have some uh, allowable limits of a, a good bead fusion and show a little bit of reinforcement on the inside of the pipe. So that's our attempt. Okay, so what, what industry does this apply to? Uh, this is going to be petrochemical, boilers, nuclear, big shortage of, of skilled craftsmen that can do nuclear type welding on a variety of different materials, not necessarily carbon steel, uh, stainless steel, chrome moly, the high P9, the P numbers, P91. Okay, so if, if the 6G is called out, some of these companies will specifically just say, do the 6G, and you're covered for everything. Is that is that a correct statement? You're covered by everything in position, not by material. Okay. So, I mean, so I pass this on carbon steel. I'm limited to carbon steel. I'm, that doesn't pre-qualify to go well on stainless. I see. So, you know, and, and a lot of companies, they're just going to test to this. Okay, so this, this material, it's already been pre-chamfered, pre-tacked. What are you going to do first? You're going to do, a obviously, a root pass. But uh, is the technique somewhat the same as the 5G? Real close. Oh, real close. Uh, I'm using a 70S6. I, use, I like to use an 8-inch wire. Uh, I like to put three, a 532nd to 316th gap. I expect a little bit of closure. Uh, in my initial fit-up, I like to put a tack at 12 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and 2 o'clock, and I like to leave the bottom open. I like to be able to see. If I expect this to close by, by weight or uh, shrinkage while I'm TIG welding, I'll simply insert a wedge over here away from where I'm welding and it'll keep this thing from closing up. Okay. Just one of your one of your special tools. Sure. Well, I mean, standard standard fit-up tools. Okay. Um, a lot of people sweat bullets over this, this particular position. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, I feel comfortable with it simply because I can... I can see everything. You know, I'm standing here looking on the inside of the pipe. I'm comfortable. I'm not upside down weird. Okay. Now, when we're in production welds and we're working up high, you're going to, wherever you are, that's what you're going to get. But for training purposes, we're simulating everything that we're doing out in the industry. Whether we're working three or four stories underground or 120 feet in the air, it's so the it, same thing. So what is this angle approximately? 45 degrees. 45 degrees? All right. 45 degrees. The other variation to this is uh, what we call a 6GR. 6GR is a restricting ring around this that kind of limits my access, okay. increases the degree of difficulty slightly. You're going to get you're going to get some strange stuff when you're out in the field. Well, all right, I'm going to get out of the way and uh, see how you do this. Okay.
this is about the time I like to see this wire stay just a little bit to the top side root face and on the inside of the pipe that way I know that the uh, reinforcement should be correct when I came off the bottom I could see down in the bottom of the piece of pipe and I knew exactly what was going on this way I'm a little bit blinded but by watching it from the outside I can actually see it flowing and I know where it's I know where it's going oh yeah I'm restart here and come up on the edge of this and melt it and then introduce my wire again you'll notice I still have sufficient gap that my wire floats freely through this gap you'll also notice that it is closing up some we expect to have some shrinkage came up on a tack here so I'm going to heat that up and blend it on the inside I'm going to do the last segment of this coming up from about 10 o'clock up to 12 o'clock to the top of the pipe and on any restart I melted the leading edge of my tack or my bead When I get up on the top of a piece of pipe like this and I'm getting ready to close it, I'm actually using less amperage or going a little faster. And I'm coming up on the very top here, so I'm running into this tack. I like to just heat them up, add some filler wire, and blend them together. And right when that starts, there it went, it starts to fall, I can weld through it and I know I've got proper fusion and now I'm going to terminate this weld here at the top crawl up on the side wall there to keep from putting a hole in it okay Bob um, God, the inside here just looks just fabulous you like that it, it does I mean it's just it just wetted out very nicely we have uh, we're well within our limits of, of reinforcement uh, can't exceed an eighth of an inch on the inside but the main thing is uh, the edges are, are fused and melted, and we have uniform reinforcements. Okay, and uh, I, I mean, I look at the consistency here. I can uh, I can count about ten dabs per inch. Do you time it that way, or does it just come natural? I'm a little nervous sometimes. I start ticking my tungsten. <laughs> Okay, well, so so what happens next? I mean, this looks great. Several variations here. First of all, let me explain that when, when we had this fit, we had a tack at 12 o'clock, uh, one at 10 o'clock, and one at 2 o'clock, and we had the entire bottom open. Same same thing that we did on our, uh, our 5G when we did that demonstration. Uh, I started on the left-hand side, with my filler wire in my right because I'm comfortable doing that and I stuck a wedge over here away from where I started just to assure that this thing wasn't going to close up on me okay and you can tell we've left this side open for viewing it hasn't moved at all through all of the through all of the weld that we put in here uh, two-thirds of this is done and we left this open purposely to see that this didn't close up on us and the tack didn't crack or break either okay so what happened here to start was you, you can walk the cup off of the bottom of the pipe. Some people will do that. I like to hold the torch uh, a little different, and I put my thumb against this, and I kind of freehand this until I come up a little bit. And then I switch hands and put the torch in my right hand, filler wire in my left, and I like to get this 
fused and make sure that it's fused on bottom. If I have a problem down here on bottom, I need to fix it down here on bottom before I weld the rest of it. It's hard to come back up underneath here and do a TIG root and get it looking like this where we have the reinforcement on the inside. Okay. So after I come off of this right side and I feel comfortable, then I can rest this in the groove again and I can start walking the cup. My right hand side is my least favorite. I kind of come back over here and I'll rest the cup in the groove and I'll walk this cup up to the, to the point where I get to the top. I'll go through my tack and then the last thing to do is to switch hands and come up and make sure that I've got closure. I like to leave a little window in here so I can see and make sure that this is in here and I don't have any repairs. I see. Okay. To finish this well, we have a couple of options here. Uh, our 5G weld that we demonstrate, we did a, a wire feed filling cap. Okay. Uh, you know, obviously, we can finish this entire weld with a tick process, gas tungsten arc welding with filler wires. Generally, um, we can do a, a TIG root and a stick filling cap. So, for this diameter and wall thickness of pipe, I'd probably take a 332nd low hydrogen rod. We've got options of, of how we can put this in the holder. Get up underneath here. Uh, a lot of times on this particular pipe, the test that I've done, I'll put two fill passes in, two stringer bead fill passes in, and a three bead cap. Okay. So when you're coming off the bottom and you're coming uh, up the side walls with both hands, my brother-in-law taught me this a long time ago. Take that rod and bend it and set it those set positions. You know, if I need to get in here, I, I, I like this right here. This is kind of strange. But I like this right here because I can I can keep that lead angle the same all the time. I can see the weld, I can see where I'm going, and I can see the finished weld. Okay, now on another episode down the road, we're going to show different methods of filling. And what I'd like for you to show me now is I know that you've got different TIG torches, different TIG setups, and I'd, I'd like sure. to see the, the variety that you use. Okay. I have a, uh, have a torch here. This would be a, an air-cooled torch. This has a CK front end on it. It's different than a standard collet body. It has a, a, a screen in here. We call that a gas lens. Okay. It helps to permeate the argon shield into a wider zone. Uh, I have a couple of options. Uh, we're welding in the shop in controlled conditions. We can simulate field conditions and weld on an air-cooled manual torch. I mean, we could even set our engine drive outside and run a bottle of argon, and, and it's electrically hot all the time. Okay. No put control involved, so if I want to do this at 80 amps, I set the machine at 80 amps, my tungsten is hot all the time, I manually turn on my gas, I have no amperage control, it's all about technique. Okay, so it's it, it's an air-cooled torch? Air-cooled torch. I have a couple of them, the samples here, uh, one small for for lower amperage work up to about 150 amps, and then we have one that uh, I've run it up to 250, 275. Okay. A couple of different uh, torch configurations. I want to thank Bob and uh, Cala County College for inviting us here, and uh, we'll do more in the future, so you know, keep the letters coming, keep the emails coming. Uh, thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.